Summer solstice at 621, 2013. I think it's very auspicious that what I'm hearing today is most interesting. And I will tell you, but I'm going to start with Luke 21. And I'm doing this for a reason. Nation shall rise against nation, verse 10, and kingdom against kingdom, and great earthquakes shall be in diverse places, and famines, and pestilences, and fearful sights, and great signs shall there be from heaven. But before all these, they shall lay their hands on you, and persecute you, Delivering you up to the synagogues and into prisons, being brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. And it shall turn to you, for a testimony settleth therefore in your hearts not to meditate before what ye shall answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries shall not be able to gainsay nor resist. And ye shall be betrayed, both by parents and brethren and kinsfolks. And friends, and some of you shall they cause to be put to death. Did you hear that? And ye shall be betrayed both by parents and brethren and kinsfolks and friends. And some of you shall they cause to be put to death. In other words, your parents, your brethren, your kinsfolks, and your friends may be the ones that cause you to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But there shall not a hair on your head perish. In your patience possess ye your souls. And then let them which are in Judea flee to the mountains. And let them which are in the midst of it depart out. And let not them that are in the countries enter thereunto. For there be in the days, for these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. But woe unto them that are with child, and them that give suck in those days, for there shall be great distress in the land and wrath upon this people. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive in all nations. Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. And then there shall be in the sun, and in the moon, and in the stars, and upon earth distress of nations, with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. Now tie that, the sea and the waves roaring, tie that in what I read last night of Isaiah 17 about the sound of the rushing of like the rushing of waters, the rushing of seas, the rushing of nations. Isaiah 17, go look it up. And just incidentally, I will tell you now, and then shall they see the Son of Man coming into in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and in your hearts, excuse me, And then when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's also go to Matthew 24, and just to give you the final flavor of this whole thing, what Jesus said here. And he said, let's go back and get the same thing here. Woe unto them that with child unto them that give suck in those days, but pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. For then shall be great tribulation. Great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Ladies and gentlemen, we are about to enter an era where this is going to come to pass. I'm just telling you. Now, let me tell you what I got uh, uh, before I came on. Uh, I've got some information here, quite interesting. And let me find it right here. There we go. Okay. Now. Uh, yesterday I heard a uh, rumor that there was a, uh, and some information from a deep background source, that there was a emergency meeting of FEMA called yesterday, some type of meeting. And then we got confirmation today, and here's what it is, and this is from a, ba- a deep background source, 
but an extremely good deep background source on this one. And I've got two or three sources on this, but just to let you know. Here's what they just received. DOD, DHS, and NORTHCOM coordinated some type of meeting with the of FEMA, all heads of all agencies, and FEMA is calling in all operational personnel and activating them. All agencies must be up to 90% battle strength within the next five weeks, 70% in the next seven days. Expect some type of domestic event. Listen closely. Expect some type of domestic event in the next 10 to 14 days. No clue what it means. And uh, basically, uh, that's what they said. But let me just tell you this. Let me repeat, DOD, that's Department of Defense, Department DHS, and NORTHCOM coordinated some type of meeting with FEMA, all heads of all agencies. FEMA is calling in all operational personnel and activating them. All agencies must be up to 90%, quote-unquote, battle strength in the next five weeks and 70% in the next seven days. Expect some type of domestic event in the next 10 to 14 days. Now, from a source I heard originally yesterday about this meeting, what I just read you is from somebody else, but I just talked with those people a while back uh, here, uh, you know, by the old grapevine, shall we say, the old uh, moccasin telegraph, whatever you want to call it. And... Uh, I just talked to them about the meeting and said that I have further confirmation about the FEMA and the DHS, the DOD meeting yesterday in the NORTHCOM. They said, absolutely, yes. I said, why is the meeting? Well, why do you say that uh, your sources say that it was being held? And what this source said, deep background, was that somebody in the intelligence community has strong information or expects a high probability an EMP event will take place over the United States that will potentially then knock the power grid out. Now, we've talked about the book, and if you do not have this book, I suggest you leave tonight after the show and go get one. William R. Forstchen, F-O-R-S-T-C-H-E-N, William R. Forstchen, F-O-R-S-T-C-H-E-N, one second after. It's a novel form. It's a forged book. It was a New York Times bestseller. We've talked to you about that. And basically what happens with the EMP hits the United States, it talks about it from the perspective in the book of a, uh, a professor. He was he used to be in the military, uh, a professor uh, in Black, uh, Black Mountain, North Carolina. I've uh, been there many times um, in that area. But... That uh, is what it's told from, but basically, if you recall when I've covered this, they talk about how after one year, after an EMP hits the United States, that after one year, they anticipate that over 90% of the population of the United States would be dead and you'd be thrown back to, thrown back to, thrown back to like the uh, early uh, 1800s, the late 1700s, with maybe a twist or two here and there where people who have alcohol, they can make their own alcohol to run a vehicle on it. But you see, that would have to be an old points and plugs vehicle or an old motorcycle or something, no electronics. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just trying to bring you as the watchman to bring you what I am hearing and what I am seeing. And what is being discussed that's happening outside the wall, this is for you to pray, take to the Lord in prayer, and for you to act accordingly. So expect some time. According to this secondary, the second source here that confirmed about this meeting, expect some type of domestic event in the next 10 to 14 days. All agencies must be at battle strength within the 70% battle strength in the next seven days. That ties in with the time frame that some people have talked about V in terms of the financial world 
he said that things he's starting to hear over there is that you should start to hear, uh, you know, at least or see by the 3rd of July, somewhere in that time frame, it should be highly evident that the markets are in real trouble. I think we've got that already. Uh, v has told you what to do. V told you what to do with your money. Take it out of the, all of the banks. Just leave it up in there to pay your mortgage or whatever your bills are for this month. Take your money out of the banks. Take all your money out of the brokerage houses, out of the 401ks, out of the stock market, out of the bond market. Just to let you know, if you're sitting out there and you just don't know what's going on, I think close to $17 billion was taken out of the bond market last week alone. We have some scenarios where we're hearing about people are trying to go and get a large chunk of their uh, stock portfolio or their, you know, their... Uh, Mutual fund or they're at their brokerage house, their brokerage account. They want to take out a hundred thousand or something, buy gold or ten thousand, whatever it is. I'm talking about people who've got substantial money in them and the brokerage houses are fighting with people and will not allow them to take their money out. And they have to almost go and get attorneys and have attorneys call and write letters and then to get the money out of the brokerage house, even though it's your money. Well, if you go to JS Mindset, JSMindset.com, you look at what uh, Jim Sinclair is basically also telling people. And just to repeat what B says, get your money out of the banks, get it out of the stock market, get it out of the bond market, put it into food supplies, farmland, or you can grow food on acreage where you can grow additional food on it, get firearms and whatever you need to protect it, and then the rest of it into gold and silver. Gold and silver. Jim Sinclair has basically got a little article on the JS Mindset today talking about the Sentinel case. And basically what it means is that if you have money in a brokerage account, if you have money in the bank, that is not your money anymore. They don't consider it to be your money. They consider that money to be the money of the brokerage house or the money of the bank, not your money. So let me tell you something. If you don't have it in the physical gold and silver, if you do not have multiple years, if you've got the money, then why not buy three years, three years, four years, five years supply of long-term storage food and get it shipped to you on pallets immediately? You know, mountain house, whatever. It'll last 25 years. If you don't like it and you think everything's going to go back to 57 Chevys and and uh, Reagan uh, economy where you got 2% unemployment or something like that, you think it's going to go back, then at that point you can donate it for a tax deduction. But I'm telling you, if you do not have it on hand and in your home, are you then going to take the mark of the beast in a martial law scenario? Because what do you think they're talking about when they're talking about some domestic event in the next 10 to 14 days? And at FEMA, DOD, DHS, NORTHCOM, coordinated some type of meeting with FEMA. That's the continuity of government. They don't care about you. They want their government to survive. And the Joker Tut Lizard to be the AC or whoever he, he purports he wants to be. And then you recall also that, you know, if you don't go along with the plan and basically you do not swear allegiance to Obama, which in the military right now, some of the oaths and some of the things in agencies are when you swear the oath, you say, and I swear the oath to uphold and defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic, and I swear to obey the orders of the President of the United States, Barack Hussein Obama. That's the way they're saying the oath. So that's a swearing of the oath. Is that then going to become the test in order for you to get health care? Is that going to be the test in order for you to get um uh, Food stamps in order for you to get assistance. When all the markets go bye-bye and the banks get on a holiday and all the stuff, and you're going to be sitting there and you don't know what's going on and you've only got enough food to last you for a week, you know, or two or three days, because you prefer fresh whole foods or something like that, you see, then you're going to have to have the ability to provide for yourself. Otherwise, do you think they're going to give you anything without taking some sort of mark card or some sort of uh, chip or some sort of thing. And, of course, 
all of the uh, pre-tribs will say, oh, well, that, you know, it can't be that because I'm not out of here, so therefore I'm going to the mall and going to go shopping for, you know, high fashion clothing so I can go to the Lucy dance tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, get your money out of the banks. Get it out of the stock market. Get it out of the bond market, out of anything paper. Put it in the things that you can eat. Put it in the good quality boots, good pairs of jeans, camouflage, whatever it is, herbal tinctures, you know, vitamins, minerals, inner health, you know, botanical products like inner food, colloidal silver, oregano, any kind of thing that you can think of. Firearms, ammunition, and then gold and silver. Gold and silver. Lindsey Williams, everybody has said that the only thing that will be the money of the elite will be gold and silver. And people still say, well, how am I going to, how am I going to operate in the system with gold or silver? It's not for you to operate into the system with gold or silver. It is to help you to be able to stay out of the mark of the beast system. Do you not get it? Well, you better get some quick, and you better start tonight, and you better get going. If you need some stuff, sit down and make your short list, not the list that says, if I had 500000 I'd go and buy me acreage up in the high mountains. No, the Russians are already up there and have your acreage and have your cabin, and they're living in it, ready to come down on you and to take it away. When the EMP hits or when something goes down, you won't even know it. Go get that book. One second after, William R. Forstchen, F-O-R-S-T-C-H-E-N, a forged book. One second after, read the book real quick. But just to skip to the chase, if you see an EMP happen and all the cars stop on the freeway and all the cars stop on, uh, you know, I-75 or I-10 or, you know, I-70 or whatever, you're going to have a problem, are you not, 40? You're going to have a little bit of a problem. And that's what happens on I-40 there at Black Mountain. All the cars stop on the road, and then everybody starts to peel off and come up into the uh, areas there. The credit cards don't work. Your debit cards won't work. Nobody's going to take a check. So you'd better get some cash at hand and put it in your home safe or hide it in your mattress or in the mason jar or wherever you're going to put it. You better have gold and silver. You need lots of silver dimes, silver quarters, silver halves. Get you some 90% silver, get the one ounces. If you have gold, you can get some one-tenth ounce, then I would do it. Uh, Steve Quayle's also got that Val Camby card you can order where you can break it off into certain pieces. I think a one or two gram piece at a time, that kind of stuff. But I suggest that you get started, and if you do not have that shotgun or that rifle or that uh, pistol or whatever you thought about getting, then find you a gun show and go out and buy one outside the gun show. Or if you can buy it inside and get through the background check, then do it quickly. Because I'm going to tell you what, they're getting ready to come for you, and if there's an EMP and martial law, and if there is anywhere in the world, anywhere in the world there's a nuclear Nuke goes off anywhere. The Middle East, there will be martial law in the United States anyway. But suppose that the Red Chinese, who are now in the Arctic, you know, they're going, uh, our money uh, bankers are going, and they've got their submarines up in the Arctic. You know, they used to talk about the Russians being able to come across the pole. Well, if the Russians are sitting up there, now the Red Chinese are sitting up there with their missile submarines, and they can launch on us, could they not? Could they not bring uh, trawlers or subs up into the Gulf of Mexico and launch one straight up over uh, Nebraska-Kansas line? Say maybe around Omaha, something like that. Uh, or Grand uh, Isle or something right in there and then pop the whole grid. Maybe they'll launch two. Maybe just to be on the safe side, they put one, uh, you know, up uh, somewhere else. And then if you have at the same time, Coinciding with that, if you have the Russian Spetsnaz, who I are hearing again today that there's more confirmation that the Russians are starting the fires in Colorado, like I've told you before, that you got, while we're getting ready to go to war against, you know, in Syria, and we've got the situation where we've got troops on the border of Jordan and Syria right now, Marine 23rd Expeditionary Force to Care Sarge, those guys, hello to you out there, but I know they can't listen to me on this thing. But if you are able to listen to some way or another, 
hello to you, and you're the tip of the spear out there, but you better be figuring out how to get out of that sucker because the Joker Tut's going to sacrifice you in a Luciferian five-dimensional chessboard, Albert Pike, Gog, Magog, World War Three. So I'm just going to tell you, you'd better get ready to duck and be able to get going and to organize your own you know, way of getting out, back out of there. Now, we're training apparently, and I don't know how they do this. You don't have any money for the veterans, you know, who need the million are in backlog for benefits, but certain ones who come back, uh, special forces, particular and guys who've been on the, really on the line for quite some time, they're giving them 20 and 30 different medications, psychotic stuff to, to just zone them out and zero their brains, you know? Uh, the old timers, the top best of the best, many of them have been zapped with, uh, mind killers and erasers and things that, uh, make your brain go, uh, goop, goop, goop and, uh, erase, erase, erase and, uh, are designed to kill you and eat your brain away. But I'm going to tell you what, there's a couple of those people who have been preserved by the Lord Jesus. And thank God for that because they're able to stand as a testimony. And when you can say that you were killed, they tried to kill you in 1969 and that the Lord has preserved you in spite of all the problems you've had. And he still preserved your function and you still are able to do it. Then God bless you. And you know who you're, who I'm talking about out there. You know who you are. So ladies and gentlemen, we just got another report from, uh, from the G-man down in, uh, near Longview, Texas. He said near the uh, regional airports, he's reserving a lot of flights of Chinooks flying in the south by southeast heading. Uh, twin rotor, uh, OD uh, color, uh, no visible markings. Heads up. Thank you, Mr. G-Man, for that report there. We're hearing about all of the troops and the things in between Tucson and uh, Phoenix. Probably out there at the old Evergreen Air. Uh, can't get in that base, shoot on site base out there where the chemtrail planes fly and the clandestine cargo comes in and out. But I'm going to tell you what, what their plan for you is, is this. Domestic and surgery in the Declaration of Martial Law. It is a 12 October 2008 document. And basically, it's talking about domestic counterinsurgency programs with the military, paramilitary, political, economic, psychological, and single actions to be taken by the government to defeat civic domestic insurgency. What's a civic domestic insurgency? That's people who cannot get any of the money out of their bank, whose credit cards don't work, and who will not take the Mark of the Beast card to go down and get into the line at the local stadium where you'll be scrutinized, where they'll take the picture of the veins in the back of your hand, they'll take an iris scan, they'll take your DNA and your fingerprints, and then you'll be uh, cycled through there and be held in the stadium for perhaps for a while. And the stadium could be your high school football stadium, your gymnasium. It could be a big church grounds at the mega church where they just put up the wire and have your preacher calm you while they put the hot iron to you and make you take the mark of the beast. And he says, oh, that's okay. We've got to eat so you can still stay in the good folds with the government. Romans 13. Ha, ha, ha. Well, I don't buy, believe it, or anything, one iota of these people. You stick with the Lord. You stick with the Lord Jesus Christ because there's power in the blood of Jesus. And you better be ready to go. You better be ready to defend your family and to stand against evil. To stand against evil. And I'm just telling you, you better be ready. And what does that entail? Does that mean you can go to bed at 7.30 at night and get up, you know, at 6.30, go and just everything's just nice and normal? No. Does it mean you're supposed to howl to 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the morning, drinking and taking dope? No. It doesn't mean that either now, does it? But it does mean that you could be a watchful eye and that you could stay up uh, uh, a little bit later or perhaps for some people uh, stay up all over the night because there's been many a times for the last... Uh, <laughs> since I've been on the radio, that I stay up ready and waiting for them. And I'll tell you, I don't recommend it all, but I'm telling you, at this period of time, get yourself used to, because, uh, oh, dark 30, you know, 4.30 a.m. is the favorite time for them to come. And here's the deal. 
Solzhenitsyn said, and how we burned in the camps later thinking, what would things have been like if every security operative, and remember they've got the Russian Spetsnaz, the Russian paratroopers here being paid by DHS, being paid by DHS or some form by the United States government, and they're going to be part of the program. They're around all over around the country, Fort Hood, they're Fort Carson, all the different major bases brag. They've been seen down there. They've been seen in Virginia. They've been seen everywhere. And how we burn in the camps, because these are the same ones that are going to come for you. And they want to come and take your guns away. They've got your address. They've got your GPS. And they put the blue dots on a lot of you, those different dots on your mailbox when they try to GPS you. You remember the last time, and a lot of you got those things in weird scenarios. Well, they know you got a firearm. So what would things have been like if every security operative, when he went out at night to make an arrest, had been uncertain whether he would return alive and had to say goodbye to his family, or if during periods of mass arrests, as, for example, in Leningrad, which is St. Petersburg today, when they arrested a quarter of the entire city. That's like a couple hundred thousand people they arrested. People had not simply sat there in their lairs, paling with terror at every bang of the downstairs door and every step on the staircase, but had understood they had nothing left to lose and had boldly set up in the downstairs hall an ambush of a half a dozen people with axes, hammers, pokers, or whatever else was at hand. The organs would very quickly have suffered a shortage of officers and transport, and notwithstanding all of Stalin's thirst, the cursed machine would have ground to a halt if, if we didn't love freedom enough. And even more, we had no awareness of the real situation. We then purely and simply deserved everything that happened afterward. You have the warning from the watchman. You have it. Hawk is giving it to you here tonight again. Steve Quayle has given it to you for over 20 years. I've been on the air now about nine years. Other people have given you the warning. Alex Jones, uh, Paul Martin, a whole bunch of people. Doug Hagman, a whole bunch of people. But you see, once a government is committed to the principle of silencing the voice of opposition, it has only one way to go, and that is down the path of increasingly repressive measures until it becomes a source of terror to all its citizens and creates a country where everyone lives in fear. And Harry S. Truman said that. Now, do you not understand that when the IRS is coming for you, if you don't agree with the Joker Tut, or the NSA is reading all of your emails, searching all of your text messages and Twitter birds, you're not getting to see the story in the picture here? We'll be back in a moment, ladies and gentlemen. Get ready. Get fired up. Quit goofing around. With not. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Hawk. Survive to Thrive. It's Friday night, 621, 2013, the longest day of the year. This is the Equinox. Now, let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. If you would like to get a discount on any of the inner food products, inner food, any of the inner health botanicals, the herbal tinctures, all of the different items, the Silmarin, the bladder rack that helps you get rid of the radiation problems. Bladder ecstasy would type weed thing. Remember, we talked about it on air here. You better get all of it that you could possibly get. And inner food, you can get it in the, the large uh, <coughs> vacuum sealed pouch. You can get that and you can stack it by the brick and take it with you. And then that, if you drink a shake or two a day, will give you all the nutrition you're going to need when you're maybe on the run. Maybe on the run. You got it? And that will help you extend your long-term storage food. 
So if you're going to shelter in, you're going to put up your defense. If you don't have sandbags and sand, if you don't have some uh, three-quarter inch plywood, where you could then make uh, with the three-quarter inch plywood sheet, you could then uh, put a uh, put that on a, a tube of six or something like that. You could then uh, make a wall. You could even put it on wheels, so to speak, or some kind of a little you know skis or something. And then you could fill the in between that with sand, or fill the in between of that with rock, and make you a little bit of something. If you have the opportunity and you've been thinking about getting that level four or level three or three A, uh, you know, uh, bullet bullet uh, proof vest or you know what I'm saying, then you should get it. You should get your vest in order to be able to try to defend yourself. If you can go get a surplus. Pazgat helmet. Even if you can't get Pazgat, then get a World War uh, II or a Vietnam War tin pot with a with a liner. Get something. Get some kind of a way to increase the odds. If you're starting to take fire and you're putting fire down line, and these sons of a bucks come for you, and the martial law comes, and then they release they release the nihilists and the atheists. And the street gangs and the motorcycle gangs and all of those that they have in their control. Let's say they cut off all the food stamps and all the welfare. What do you think happens? Well, it's just not going to be black or Hispanic people now, is it? There's going to be a lot of old hillbillies going to come out of the woodwork too, ain't there? I'm telling you, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be the most interesting thing. Because just as Luke 21 tells you, you're going to be betrayed by your parents your brethren, your kinsfolk, your friends. And they're going to give you up in order to get a little bit more cheese or a extra water ration or whatever thing that the rats will get from the power structure. And the power structure is going to be Ivan and the Luciferians, you know. And, oh, boy. And then, you know, this Joker Tut Lizard, El Presidente, Jefe, whatever he calls himself, wants to be, want to be AC. Six of his top advisors are Muslim Brotherhood. So now we're sending U.S. military to go to Egypt for riot training and and, uh, Hood to go to Egypt. Well, that will then prop up and be a continuity of government, apparently, for the Muslim Brotherhood of Egypt. That the Joker Tut just loves and installed into power. So ladies and gentlemen, the gloves are about to come off. The face has come off, the mask has come off, and you can see, just as Steve Quayle told you a long time ago, and as Cornky told you, eventually the old mask is going to come off, you're going to see the face of evil. Steve said before all this thing is said and done, the Lord had told him that everything all of the iniquity and the sin and the evil of the of the top dogs and rulers of the United States would be brought out and be seen before everybody, before the, you know what, the big day comes when the stuff really hits the pan. And now, if you just look at the drudge, and you just look at it right now, and I'm just going to click right over here to it. Read this right here. Snowden charged, but the complaint is sealed, so they, you can't know why they're charging him. And then Obama meets with privacy watchdog panel in private, of course. NSA gene agency can snoop without warrant. We've told you that long ago. They think they can do that. Lawyers eye for evidence in murder and divorce cases. The legal jackals trying to figure out how they can get all that secret information that's not even supposed to be there. Of course, lying through their teeth, you know, Alexander, Keith Alexander, General Alexander, the NSA, incidentally, get your, get your postcard out and write on there, send it to your senator, send it to your congresspeople, and say, arrest General Alexander, the NSA, for perjury before Congress. And then put underneath that, cut the NSA budget by 75%. Send that in a postcard. And don't put a return address on it, because they'll already know that it was you anyway. 
They'll probably take your fingerprints off the postcard. Ladies and gentlemen, the extreme Nazi case is being set up in this country, and if you do not see it, you think it's okay, then don't listen to this show anymore, because I'm going to tell you what. Then you're either with those suckers, and you're going to take the mark of the beast, and you think you're going to be cool in your tailored agency E-I-E-O-O clothing, and get your hut, 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 and your ho, 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 and your and your war wagon, and I got tin and windows and a badge. I'm gonna lord it over them boys. And when the when and when the stuff gets real good, they're gonna commandeer these houses of these of these terrorists, these so-called terrorists, these these Ron Paul supporters, these constitutional scum, and these Second Amendment rights people. And these Christians, we're going to get their houses anyway. Remember what I've told you before, that the Canadian general was overheard saying, you stupid Americans, Canadian general, that's right. You stupid Americans. If you're going to ask one question, we come to your house, and it could be the bird flu or whatever it's going to be. Well, what do we got? Incidentally, we got the World Health Organization meeting about MERS saying it's a big pandemic potential. And as I told you, the 82% kill ratio, are they going to unleash that too? Or are they going to wait till everybody goes to the pilgrimage at Mecca to the Hajj and comes back with it on every airplane in the United States and spreads it all over the world? That would be a real interesting thing to do if you were a Muslim and you wanted to start the war, and then you even came and took claim from it. Remember when old Ahmadinejad, Almond Joy, and the coconuts were saying, that you've got to start the uh, final jihad to bring the 12th imam up out of the well, and the whole world needs to be at war so they can bring their 12th imam, the imam Mahdi, up. And then you've got all the other people, and you got the high Masonics, and this Lucy that, and Lucy this, and Lucy the other talking about this is their time. Apollyon rise in 2012, and that means we're getting ready to have the Mideast War, the Gog-Magog War. We're getting ready to see Damascus destroyed in a day. And I'm going to tell you what, if you listen to me, you've had a heads up on it all. And then if you read uh, Doug Hagman's uh, report, uh, more DHS insider from D.C., Report, uh, I think Steve posted yesterday. It's also up at uh, uh, Doug Hagman's site, uh, HomelandSecurityUS.com, HomelandSecurityUS.com, which you can link through from SteveQuayle.com. This is the banner for it. And the DHS Insider said it's about to get very ugly. All right, well, you need to read that and see what's being said there. And I'm going to tell you what. You got Russians in here. You got all this stuff going on. I wish that we could be like Brazil. And I'll tell you what would stop it or would scare the poop out of them for a change is if we could put two million people in the streets. Two million middle class, well educated, hard working or attempting to be hard working people. And incidentally, they don't have much unemployment in Brazil. And then isn't it interesting that Brazil has a lot of oil now too? So if you could collapse it, It'd be very interesting, wouldn't it? All ladies and gentlemen, then you have the articles out there. Say hello. Indefinite surveillance. Say hello to the National Defense Authorization Act of 2014. It's an article at globalresearch.ca, globalresearch.ca, indefinite surveillance. You need to read that article. And basically, it calls right in there, basically, to authorize the Secretary of Defense to establish a center to be known as the Conflict Records Research Center. The Conflict, that means you're at war. And then in 1917, the Trading with the Enemy Act of 1917 declared that you as a U.S. citizen are an enemy of the state. And then in 1933, the Trading with the Enemy Act of 1917 as amended in 1933 established an executive dictatorship, an emergency powers act, and only the president can rescind that, and then it's been added to by every president since. So don't tell me this, that, or the other. And then you got plumbers and hit teams coming out of Chicago, and they're talking about centralization of power. 
that's another very interesting thing that uh, is in the Doug Hagman's uh, article that he wrote from his source in the DHS. So, ladies and gentlemen, if they expect an EMP, you better take some walkie-talkies, a shortwave radio, and, you know, maybe a laptop computer and some different things. And you need to get yourself a galvanized garbage can. If you'll put down on the bottom of that some cardboard or uh, some kind of a blanket or something like that, you'll just have to research it. You know, look up Faraday cage, Fara, F-A-R-A-D-A-Y, Faraday cage, Faraday box. And you can put that in a galvanized uh, garbage can with the lid. And I'm going to tell you something. You also can do some things with ammo tins and what have you. But if you're going to put something away, I would do so and get it done now. I would go and get it final, some final food preps, and I would say things that you could eat if you had to put a backpack on. And I'm not talking about the bug out pack of all bug out packs that weighs 390 pounds that you're going to walk from here to New Mexico with. No, I'm talking about a fighting load. I'm talking about something that you can have and you can operate in the field for 10 to 14 days by yourself. And that means you're going to need load bearing equipment. You're going to need the belts, the, uh, um, butt pack, small backpacks, all of the different things. Your holsters, your shovel, your fold up shovel to dig, uh, plenty of canteens or a, or a camelback, uh, system. I still am old fashioned like canteens. Well, I want to, I want to, <laughs> I want about three or four, two, you know, one quart, you know, the small canteen. And then I also want like a collapsible big one in my pack or, you know, tied somewhere else. And then you better have you a, a K-Bar knife, or if you've got the good money to get a fine knife, go to sharpsaddles.com, sharpsaddles.com, and order you a knife that when it hits the bone, it don't turn away. And Clay will make you a good one just for you. And you tell them Hawk sent you. But you better have a machete, some different things, and you better have a rifle, and you better have... If you're going to operate by yourself, 200 to 300 rounds of ammunition, you better have, you know, 12, 14 magazines, 10, 12, 14 mags ready to go. And uh, I know it's heavy, but I'm going to tell you what, you better be ready. And uh, you can also have that at your side there if you're going to have a position in your upstairs, your, your garage raptor window or uh the uh, back behind the old tree or from the kids uh the kids uh, tree house down the street or wherever it is you're going to be or in the end of the sewer pipes down at the old concrete plant you know where you could get in the sewer pipes incidentally that's another very interesting way if there is an EMP strike you can go and get under concrete and the old story is you know 3 feet of dirt you know 3 feet of dirt Two feet of concrete, you know. So, ladies and gentlemen, prepare in earnest. And I'll tell you something. If you would like to get gold or silver, then you can call Steve Quayle at 406-586-4840. If you're not there, leave your name, your number. Tell them what you want, and they'll call you back. Or you can email Steve777 at Steve Quayle. Dot com, Q U A Y L E, Steve seven 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 at stevequail dot com. And if you do that, you can say, Steve, I'd like to get into gold, or I'd like to get into silver now, because Steve does have the capability to get any amount you want. But do not expect to be paying anywhere from Steve or anybody else. If you want it right now, you want the stuff right now, and you want a nice amount or a nice quantity. I'm not talking about one ounce you buy from this guy at a small coin store in a little town. I'm talking about if you want to get you some gold or you want to get you some silver. You're going to be able to not pay spot because it's going to be a substantial premium. We've talked about that. Don't even worry about it. V told you not to worry about the up and down of the price. It's going to go rickety, blickety split, and they're trying to get you to get rid of any gold or silver you have. This is the time to buy more. This is when the Chinese are buying all they can get. 
This is when the Indians are trying to get all they can get, so much so that it's becoming the gold smuggling hub of the world because their government has put like a 30% tax on an ounce of gold for importation. So does that sound familiar? Does it sound like uh, in the government that now uh, we've come out from Russell Tice, who was in the Bush NSA whistleblower, incidentally, uh, put on your postcard, you know, uh, arrest uh, General Alexander of the NSA uh, for uh, perjury before Congress. And uh, right underneath that, send it to all your senators, your Congress people, cut the NSA budget 70, 75%. Uh, you could also say cut the budget of the FBI, but oh no, uh, Obama, that's interesting, isn't it? He has, uh, nominated a new director of the FBI. Old Herr Mueller is gonna step down. And if Congress approves this Comey guy, he's a great big guy, about like 6'4", 6 6'6", 6 6, something like that. And supposedly he fought against, during the Ashcroft year, fought against those elements of the Bush people like Alberto Gonzalez who wanted to take, you know, this listing program and have, uh, you know, do all the thing. They've been doing it all along and all that's just baloney. He may have objected to part of it on behalf of Ashcroft, and if that's the case, that's great. What has he done for me since then when all of this stuff has been going on? The NSA has been listening to everything and has been in cahoots with every phone company since, since 1947. Since 1947. Whatever the technological means is, and that is technology that's way beyond what even the regular military knows about. We're talking about technology developed on the Isles of Dr. Moreau. Technology that the NSA in collusion with aliens from other planets or other dimensions and in interaction with them and reverse engineering of their technology and not only reverse engineering, but interaction with those aliens and allowing them access into NSA and to mingle in amongst, you see, And you don't even have to go there, but it is true, and that is there. So you're up against something that's quite formidable, but I'm going to tell you what. If you can put two million people in the street, and you can adhere to what Solzhenitsyn said, and if you don't take their stinking mark of the beast, and you've got plenty of food or as, or as much food as you can get a hold of, you know, because the true salvation is in the Lord Jesus. And he will provide for his people. That doesn't mean that everybody comes out of it without a, you know, alive. It doesn't mean that everybody comes out with a body. But it does mean that you'll have everlasting life with the Lord in heaven if you believe on him. But also at the same time, I've talked to you about John, where he says in there that everything I would, I have done, you would do also because I go to be with my father, Jesus says. He also tells you if you have the faith in the mustard seed, you can tell a mountain to move, and it'll move. He's given you dominion, given you authority over scorpions and serpents. Use it. Now, if you'd like to assist me in any kind of way, and I can use the help, you can send me, you can send Federal Reserve notes, medals, silver, whatever. You can send it, or if you just want to send a card, you can direct it to uh, Hawk in care of Steve Quayle at 315 Edelweiss, E-D-E-L-W-E-I-S-S Drive, 315 Edelweiss Drive, Bozeman, Montana, 59718. And you can send me a card, a letter, whatever. If you enclose it in there, I will receive it. If you send Federal Reserve notes, medals, whatever, I appreciate everything you get. I don't read everybody's name on air, but I try to at least acknowledge you in some way or another. But just suffice to say, in the name of the Lord, I thank you for all that you would uh, provide for me to help me in my end times. Because I've been up here, I've been up here now for nine years, and I've said things on the air. And last night was proof because they knocked me off the air five times 
If you don't believe it, you can go listen to the archive. You'll probably see the gaps, and you'll hear me come back and talk about it. So the NSA telltaled themselves, or the FBI, whoever it was, telltaled themselves last night, and basically they confirmed that everything I said on last night's show it gave me credibility because they knocked me off the air five separate times. Consequently, ladies and gentlemen, they don't do that when you're, you know, spieling out the baloney. So if you don't want to be somebody herded into a sports stadium to take the mark of the beast or you see your children die from starvation and you get herded there by some Russian spetsnaz with vodka smelling breath and just with a gun to your head or if they haven't killed you already to where they've got your home and are using your wife, your children, <laughs> your family dog, then by all means, prepare. Get your food stores up. Contact innerfood.com. Innerfood.com. If you can't afford the 40-day, 40-night pail, then get the 14-night, 40-day, 14-night pail. For like ninety nine ninety five ninety nine hundred bucks, organic food, high quality. Get the tinctures, get all of that stuff if you can. But start tonight. And if you're going to go out, you can buy some canned goods. If all you got's enough for one more can, a chunky soup, then I suggest you go buy it. If you can go out and find any ammunition, I suggest you go get it. I would also look at things that you don't necessarily think about, like. Get everybody else in the family another pair of blue jeans. Get another group of underwear, you know, another group of good, strong, sturdy, athletic socks. Get a good pair of boots. And you can get something that, you know, is does double duty, you know, or you can get a summer and a winter boot. If you had the money. Get a winter boot and a summer boot for everybody. Another one. Another pair of boots. And get them big enough so you can wear a big, thick, heavy wool sock or, you know, whatever with it. If you can get a hold of Kevlar body armor, then I suggest you do it. And if you uh, can get a hold of, you know, level four, then by all means buy it. If you get a Pazgat helmet, buy it. And when I'll tell you something, when you start to hear all of that stuff reverberating through and people start to talk about how many, how much body armor is being bought, how many Pazgat helmets have been bought by surplus stores, you see, or from ordering it from old Gary Olden up in Minnesota, he used to have Pazgat helmets or other surplus online places. You know, you'll know the names of them. Major surplus might have it. Uh, all kind of different people like that. You can get a lot of good equipment, camping stoves, all kind of good stuff. Whatever it is you need, make your short list. Because like I told you, DOD, DHS, and NORTHCOM coordinated some type of meeting with FEMA, all heads of all agencies. FEMA is calling in all operational personnel, activating them. All agencies must be up to 90% battle strength in the next five weeks, 70% in the next seven days. Expect some type of domestic event in the next 10 to 14 days. No clue what this means. And uh, then uh, from another source who originally tipped me to the meeting yesterday that there was a FEMA meeting, he says that the high probability in the intelligence community is, is that there will be an EMP attack on the United States that will take out the power grid. So you better get your money out of the banks. You better turn it over into something that you can utilize. Get it out of your stock market. Get it out of your 401k. I don't care what it is. That's what V told you to do. That's what everybody's told you to do. Uh, Lindsey Williams told you to do that, you know, a long time ago when he said his elite said that gold and silver would be the only currency. Jim Sinclair is basically saying it in another way by his article on there talking about how the money that you have in a brokerage account or in a bank is no longer yours. Well, you need to make it yours and put it to good use. Before it's too late, you got to face to take the mark of the beast or die. 
Ladies and gentlemen, don't go into their Luciferian night without a fight. To the mighty men and women of valor up there in your TR3, Bs, TR4s, if you have the ability and the Lord will allow you, call the fire down on the Lucys for a change. Take them out. Carry them to the Fandango Rangers, wherever you may be. I know you got that old dance ready to go. And the Mickey LaPool, I know you're high and dry on the cool side in the deep heat, ready and waiting and dialed in. God bless you all. Good night.